Hi, my name is Dr. Ami Bhatt, and I'm one of the heart doctors here at the Massachusetts General Hospital Heart Center and one of the directors of the Adult Congenital Heart Disease Program. I'm excited to speak with you today about adult congenital heart disease and the road to surgery if needed. Please remember that this conversation should not replace conversations that you need to have with your own doctor. Congenital heart disease involves when you're born with something that is different about your heart. You may have known about it since childhood and maybe even had procedures along the way, or you may be learning about it for the very first time as an adult. Regardless of whether you've known about it for a long time or just found out, most adults with congenital heart disease need to have regular cardiology follow-up. In the United States, there are now over one million people who are adults with congenital heart disease, and that's more than the number of kids with congenital heart disease. You may set up a meeting with an adult congenital heart disease doctor to talk about life changes such as pregnancy, family planning, exercise or fitness plans, or you may need to see someone for symptoms such as for palpitations, funny heartbeats or arrhythmias, or because you're increasingly tired, tired when doing exercise, or because there's a lot of fluid building up in your body. Sometimes your doctor will recommend a meeting with an adult congenital heart disease doctor to talk about potential surgery. Surgery in adult congenital heart disease can be for several reasons. Some of the more common ones are to close a hole in the heart or to fix a valve in the heart. Valves are doorways in the heart that allow blood to flow forward and not flow back. You can imagine if there's a narrowing in that doorway or if there's leakage and blood sloshing back and forth, that's more work for the heart muscle to do. There are more complicated reasons for surgery in adult congenital heart disease that may involve fixing a surgery that you've had in the past or a brand new surgery. When we perform surgery, it's oftentimes through a sternotomy or an incision down the front of the chest. That can also be on the side sometimes, and sometimes you can get a mini sternotomy or a small incision. Other times we can do it through two small holes on the side of the chest where we put instruments in and watch through a video as we do the surgery. Some people don't even need surgery. Oftentimes a catheter procedure is enough. But again, speak with your doctor about the best option for you. In the end, what you want is the option that gives you the longest lasting and best result. The road to surgery first involves multiple meetings with your own cardiologist, an adult congenital heart disease specialist, and the cardiac surgeon. It may involve testing, including an exam in the office and an EKG, an ultrasound or an echocardiogram to take pictures of the heart, or an MRI or CAT scan. You may also do some exercise testing or a cardiac catheterization, where we check the flow of blood and pressures in your heart. Your doctor may also suggest that they have a group meeting and review your case with the catheter doctors, the imaging doctors, and the surgeon. This may seem like it extends the time until you get to surgery. However, it's a very important part of the planning process to keep you safe and give you the best outcomes. When you decide to go forward with surgery, the week before the surgery, you'll have a preoperative visit. And at that visit, you'll meet some of the doctors and nurses who will be there on the day of your surgery have some additional testing, and get to ask some last-minute questions. If you should fall sick between that visit and the day of your surgery, definitely give your doctor a call. And then it's off to surgery. Best of luck, keep safe, and make sure to be an active participant in your own health care.